Hello friends, in this video we are going to talk about anemia in pregnancy. This is a very common topic, routinely asked topic in pregnancy. Now first of all we need to talk about some definition. There are various definition available for that but the most accepted definition we are talking here. We see HB level. HB level is considered into gram per deciliter of blood. Also it is called percentage. So if less than 11 gram percentage we call it as a anemia. But certain, uh, certain criteria is there for different trimesters. For example in first and third trimester the cutoff is 11 gram. But for second trimester the cutoff is 10.5 gram percentage. So when we call it anemia in first and third trimester it is 11 11 and for second trimester the cutoff is 10.5. Now depending on the level we, uh, we see the degrees of anemia. For example mild degree it is 10 to 10.9 for moderate anemia 7 to 10. For very severe, uh, sorry, for severe anemia, severe degree anemia, we considered it as a 7. So, this cutoff 7 gram percentage is very, very important if you will see further in this video also. Uh, one is a very, very severe degree anemia that is less than 4 gram percentage. Now, we need to understand the concept why the anemia develops and what we need to do if the, if if we have this kind of patients for example if we see normal blood in normal blood 55 percentage of volume is of plasma and 45 percentage of blood volume is of rbc that is packed cell volume pcv so when there is a pregnancy there is certain changes into this physiological aspects for example the plasma increases by 30 to 40 percentage where the rbc that is pcv packed cell volume increases only 10 to 15 percent so the increase is less than the plasma increase the increase in PCV is compared to plasma increase is less. So there is a hemodilution and that's why uh, because of hemodilution we got this kind of picture. Why hemodilation happen, happen in second trimester? Why? Because in first trimester In first trimester we have a baby developing up to 12 weeks a baby is getting developed and the blood supply to the uterus and blood supply to the fetus is increasing day by day in second trimester when the almost all fetal growth is happening the blood flow to the fetus should be very very good very very maximum so for increased blood flow what we need we need a hemodilution that's why uh, more and more blood can easily pass through the placental circulation because of decrease in viscosity of blood viscosity in blood should be decreased then only more and more amount of blood can easily pass through the utero placental circulation that's why there is a physiological anemia and it is more common in second trimester. Now, when we find that there is an anemia in pregnancy, we need to identify the cause behind that. There are various causes, common causes, uncommon causes, but you need to learn it like acquired causes. That means the anemia is acquired during during pregnancy or the anemia is acquired due to some diseases for example the very common anemia is iron deficiency anemia 
anemia can also happen with the deficiencies of B12 and folic acid. Anemia of chronic disease, any liver, any renal diseases can cause acquired anemia. Aplastic, hyperplastic anemia is also due to some acquired causes. And the second one is hereditary anemia, in which there are some hereditary uh, reasons or, or some these syndromes that causes anemia. Like thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, hemoglobinopathies, hereditary hemolytic anemia. All these kind of things are the hereditary causes of anemia. Now, once we, uh, once we diagnose that, that in pregnancy the Hb level is less than 11 gram in first and third trimester and less than 10.5 gram in second trimester, we need to investigate the patient. We need to investigate some amount of uh, blood investigation. For example, first what we do is peripheral smear along with RBC indices. Peripheral smear, what we do, we take the blood, put it into the slide and we see through the microscope. And what RBC indices do, we just measure the RBC volume, the concentration of hemoglobin in particular one RBC and along all the RBCs. So, these two things we need to uh, investigate. In case of peripheral smear, if we see fragmented cells, spherocytes, sickle cells, then these are suggestive of some hereditary region or some kind of hemolytic anemia. So we need to further get the workup for hemolytic anemia. For example, hemoglobinopathies and any reason for hemolysis. If we, uh, now we concentrate on RBCs. RBCs can be three types. For example, one is a normal volume that is called normocytic anemia. If the RBC volume is increased, then we call it macrocytic anemia. And if the RBC volume is decreased, we call it microcytic anemia. So, if we, if we thought about normocytic anemia, in which the RBC volume is normal, then the causes can be renal disease or any impaired marrow response. That means the RBC are getting generated, RBC are synthesized but in less, vol uh, in less quantity. That happens in the renal disease and some kind of marrow problems where the RBC is synthesized. The second one is macrocytic anemia. We also call it megaloblastic anemia. The two very reasons of megaloblastic anemia are folate deficiency and vitamin B12 deficiency and may it may happen in liver disease or hypothyroidism so if we see the macrocytes then we need to see the megaloblasts macrocytes means we see the size of the RBC is increased but when we find megaloblast also there then there could be a uh, beta, uh, vitamin B12 deficiency or it may be folic acid deficiency. But if we don't find the megaloblasts, then it can be due to hypothyroidism or some liver diseases. So here is the algorithm. The most common type of anemia in pregnancy is microcytic anemia. And it is because of deficiency in iron, deficiency in Hb. So, when we find uh, microcytic anemia, we need to further investigate the Aryan profile of the patient. And what is the Aryan profile? We investigate some parameters, for example, serum ferritin, serum Aryan, Aryan binding capacity. All these things you will learn in Aryan metabolism. We will have a different video in Aryan metabolism but for right now you need to remember that that we do three levels serum ferritin level serum Aryan level and Aryan binding capacity levels so if we find these all indices are lower side 
then we decide it as a Aryan deficiency anemia. But if we find a microcytic anemia and the Aryan profile is normal, then we should look forward for thalassemia. In case of thalassemia, there is hemoglobin is less. But the deficiency in hemoglobin is due, not due to Aryan deficiency. So here also microcytic anemia happens but the Aryan profile is normal. So what is the diagnostic criteria and why we should uh, see what investigation we, sh we should look forward. The very important investigation is ferritin level. Serum ferritin level less than 30 microgram per liter it is diagnostic of Aryan deficiency anemia. And if we uh, considering thalassemia, we should proceed forward forward with HB electrophoresis and Nestroff test. In in all this uh, kind of test is we uh, we see increase in adult hemoglobin A2, HbA2. If HbA2 is increased, then we should consider for thalassemia. So there is a so there is a very important algorithm here. Now, I have some uh, some figures for this uh, investigation. For example, serum ferritin level should be more than 30 microgram per liter. Total Aryan binding capacity that is called TIBC is the normal value is 240 to 450. TIBC is increased in case of Aryan deficiency anemia. Transferrin level, transferrin saturation can also be measured. Normal value is 20 to 50 percentage. What is MCHC is mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. That means per RBC how much hemoglobin is there. The normally it should be 33 to 35 gram per DL. So if it is less than that we consider is a hemoglobin level deficiency mcv that is mean corpuscular volume the volume of each rbc the normal value is 80 to 100 femtoliter in case of microcytic anemia microcytic hypochromic anemia we see that the mchc is also decreased and mcv is also decreased again the aryan deficiency we will talk about in another video in this aspect we should have this much knowledge is enough i think so once once we see that the very important and very common type of anemia in pregnancy is aryan deficiency anemia the nutritious anemia we also call it as a nutritious anemia. Why? Because there is a de decrease in some nutrition that is Aryan and folic acid. So we, we call it as a combined as a nutritious anemia. Now one uh, very important figures and very important concept is there that for development of the baby we need uh, because in the pregnancy we, we know that the blood volume is going to increase. And we also need some amount of blood for fetus also. So it is considered that that per pregnancy a woman needs 1000 mg of Aryan in all pregnancy the whole uh, nine months we need one gram of Aryan elemental Aryan that is 1000 microgram sorry 1000 milligram so how we provide this kind of extra aryan to the pregnant lady whatever the source of aryan for example it may be uh, the uh, oral tablets or it may be parental aryan what can be the source of aryan the bioavailability is only 10 mg per 100 microgram. So, if we provide 1000 microgram 
1000 milligram iron to a lady then only 100 gram of 100 milligram of iron will be absorbed or 100 milligram of iron will be used so bioavailability is 10 percent only whatever the uh, source it may be parenteral iron or it may be oral iron we have one particular thing in india that is government supply tablets in government supply tablets uh, we have 300 mic uh, 300 milligram of ferrous sulfate remember ferrous sulfate it is not only iron we need elemental iron so if we see that we have 300 milligram of ferrous sulfate tablet we only get 50 to 60 mg of elemental iron per 300 uh, milligram of ferrous sulfate feso4 we only get 50 to 60 percent of uh, 50 to 60 milligram of elemental iron and in government supply tablets we also have 500 microgram of folic acid that is 0.5 mg so whenever you see a tablet a oral tablet in case of pregnant lady we write iron folic acid what is exactly the iron folic acid we have 300 micro 300 milligram of tablet of ferrous sulfate in which we get 50 to 60 gram 50 to 60 milligram of elemental iron and along with that we have a folic acid also that is 0.5 mg now how we treat this kind of anemias how we treat we have various supply various way of supply of hemoglobin to the patient first of all is oral tablets the second one is parenteral iron that means iv or im injections and the third and last resort is blood transfusion okay so iron supplementation the first important thing is we need to remember the how much iron we should give we need to calculate the iron before administrating iron into someone's body that is a there are various various formulas for that but the very common formula is but the very very common formula is here that is how to calculate the dose of iron it is weight of the patient into hb deficit remember we are not here taking as a hb level we are taking hb deficits if if we have uh, hb level of 9 gram then what is the hb deficit the uh, and one thing also you need to remember very important is we take it 14 one four so if someone patient's hp level is nine gram then what is hp deficit it would be five so remember this weight of the patient into hp deficit into 2.21 this is very very simple formula weight hp deficit 2.21 this amount of iron in mg we should administer plus 1000 mg for storage okay so this is a very common formula you need to remember how we uh, give oral tablets for oral tablets we have no problem of calculating the exit dose because when we give iron to some patient the elementary system that means the gut system itself takes the iron what it needs for example the body needs 500 mg of iron then whatever the dose you supply with oral tablets the gut will absorb only for 500 of iron so in case of oral tablets we have less uh, risk of iron toxicity 
but when we choose parenteral Aryan therapy we need to calculate the dose because we cannot administer extra Aryan because it is also harmful and it is causes Aryan toxicity okay so what we should do when the patient comes to you with anemia what you treat them first of all you offer them the oral tablets and how you give the oral tablets 60 mg of element Aryan is present in one tablet so you prescribe them one TDS one TDS means one tablet three times a day that means you are administrating 60 into 3 that is 180 to 200 elemental arium per day till the blood parameter is normal that means the hb comes to more than 11 then then after you can give the maintenance dose of arium so it's very important to know that yes first of all whenever you find there is an anemic patient if you decide to give the oral treatment then you need to give one tds then one bd then one od but again oral Aryan tablets have some amount of uh, problems like uh, gastric pain abdominal pain vomiting diarrhea this also can happen so choose wisely how to give the tablets you can start with low dose like one od and gradually go to 1 TDS and sometimes you need to start directly 1 TDS depending on the uh, compliance of the patient but the one thing you need to remember one thing is very important to you is very 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 important is whatever the source you give to the patient for example if you give parenteral Aryan or if you give oral Aryan the increase in HB is not very quick whatever dose you give to the patient the increase in hb will be 0.7 to 1 gram per week so if you want to increase the hb uh, like 2 gram then you should know that you must have the time of 2 weeks at least to get that level so the timing is very important here the uh, there are various uh, combination of Aryan available for intravenous or intra uh, muscular doses there are various various uh, conjugates but what we use it Aryan sucrose and then Aryan carboxymaltose the Aryan sucrose is very good how you give them the Aryan the one vial this is the vial of Aryan sucrose comes 200 mg of Aryan so what you do you take the 100 ml NS bottle you put this amount of Aryan into this bottle and you give them intravenously slowly three times weekly that means on alternate day so what are you giving you are giving 200 mg of Aryan three times weekly that means 600 mg of Aryan per week then only you can expect one gram of HB increase per week so this is very important and now Aryan the next and very latest combination is what Aryan carboxymaltose Aryan carboxymaltose is what 1000 mg of Aryan one times only one time over 15 minutes in 500 ml of NS less than 500 ml of NS the NS should more, not more than 500 because again the concentration of this Aryan carboxymaltose is uh, less then it is not going to useful so consider this thing also what you need to read this that the parental Aryan is also available but one very important thing uh, many many students uh, forget is it is not as easy as you are seeing because giving parental Aryan has a as a risk of anapyletic reaction so whenever you are giving Aryan sucrose give it in the daytime when you have all kind of doctors available with you 
if anything happens then you can manage otherwise this is not the thing that you can give routinely to someone or uh, this is not the treatment you can give someone uh, to go and take it at, a, at their homes the aryan sucrose or aryan carboxymaltose can only be given in the hospital because they have the considerable risk of anaphylactic reactions and that's why we need to mon uh, we need to give it into a hospital under our monitoring remember this thing i already told you the concept of timing i told you that whatever the source of rn you give to the patient the increase in hb is not quick only point uh, only point 0.7 to 1 gram per week sometime it happens like that the when the patient comes to you at 38 weeks now the time of delivery is what 40 weeks you have only got 2 weeks and the hb level is less than 7 or 6 what you should do should you give the parenteral rn should you give the oral rn it is not going to help because the time it takes to get the uh, anemia corrected is more than the time of delivery and the time of delivery is very important because at that time the postpartum hemorrhage happens at that time bleeding happens so whenever there is a delivery whenever there is a, a cesarean section or delivery or anything related to parturition for example even abortion you need to have certain amount of hemoglobin you cannot uh, go forward with this amount of hb is like 6 g 7 g 7.5 g and you are going for delivery or you are going for cesarean section or even you are going for a uh, abortion induced abortion this is very very important here because the risk of bleeding is there and slight bleeding can uh, can uh, can have a very very bad prognosis for the patient of anemia so the timing is very important if we don't have a time if we need to really uh, uh, make it quick then the blood transfusion is the only way like you see here if you want to uh, increase the hb from 6 g to 10 g you need 4 weeks or 1 month and hb at the time of delivery we considered it should be more than 10 g and in 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 very severe conditions you can go for further further with less than 7 g but if it is less than 7 g you cannot proceed forward further you have to arrange blood transfusion anywhere now the, uh, we will talk about pregnancy is like if if the pregnancy is more than 36 weeks and we find it that the lady is anemic then we have no option other than the blood transfusion if we see that yes our pregnancy is of 30 to 36 weeks we have some time we have some one month of time then we can give them parenteral rn why we are giving parenteral rn and we are not giving the oral rn because oral rn has issues of compliance because the oral tablets uh, gives the diarrhea vomiting kind of sensations nausea and some patients might not take those tablets and we cannot afford this non compliance at this this particular time of 30 to 36 weeks that's why we give them parenteral rn if the pregnancy is in early pregnancy like less than 30 weeks yes we can start with oral rn if we don't have the compliance of the patient with us then we can go for parenteral area so this was the quick quick tour of anemia and pregnancy to understand the anemia and pregnancy iron deficiency anemia you need to go further with hb metabolism uh, how the hb is is generated from the iron different kind of hemoglobinopathies and how you treat them these all are medical disorders and it will be covered under medical disorders in the pregnancy but right now we are talking about very very bird view of anemia in pregnancy thank you